So, wow. So speaking in terms of your upbringing, your childhood, and how finances were approached at home, it sounds like we have a similarity in common in, in that you saw something growing up financially where your mother was somewhat constrained and restricted financially. Yes. And a, a degree of extremity from your point of view for some of yeah. the big necessities. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you pretty, you pretty much made up your, your mind early that that's, that's not going to be me. Uh, and <laughs> similarly, I've had that experience when I was growing up, whereas it was more so of, you know, as a kid, you can sense, you can see when there's a natural struggle, when we have to pick up and move and go stay with a grandma here or, you know, things like that. And I can't always get the new clothes that I need for school or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. evident. And I, I just saw a, a, a theme, a pattern of financial struggle for one reason or another. And I just, I had my mind made up early on that that's not, it. it's going to be going to stop with me somehow, mm -hmm. some way, you know, mm -hmm. I had visions of becoming a businessman early on, you know, even though I, I grew up playing sports, I was always athletic but I was never actually genuinely passionate about it. It may sound kind of strange. Uh, <laughs> but I myself being a businessman, yes. building wealth and ending, ending that cycle. So mm -hmm. I can definitely relate to, uh, to being exposed to a certain way that finances are handled in your household. Or you just, you recognizing early on that, hey, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the path a little bit no. Right. And how did you, if you don't mind me asking, how did you strategically, and when did you know, and how did you make a plan for yourself to make, to really break out of that pathology that your family had already established? How did you, what was your plan? I mean, of course, I'm sure it evolved because, you know. <laughs> I, I knew early, Alicia. I, I, I want to say about between eight and 10 years old, my mom will tell you to this day that I used to run around the apartment singing this song, I, I Want to Be Rich. And I forget who, who the artist was, but I I, I, was, I had these visual, visualizations early and I can feel the constraints of not having, you know, access to the basics uh, all the time, like three square meals a day and, and things like that. And right. so, and I've always been a bookworm and mm. I grew up reading books like uh, fictional books like Goosebumps and stuff like that. And then that transitioned into me picking up books about finance and investing. Mm. And I books about that and during my, during my teenage years. And then when I went off to college to play football, I, I decided to, to major in, in business management. I didn't know at that time exactly what I wanted to do in business, but I knew it was going to be something business related inherently. And I also had a natural entrepreneurship bug. Mm. I don't come from a household of entrepreneurs, but I, I had my first taste of earning money and kind of being in business for myself as a 10 year old. I have a twin sister and we had, I had secured a paper out deal for me and my twin sister at 10 oh. years old. Nice. So we're working for a, a company, I never forget it a newspaper company called The Shopper. And once a week, the, a, a van will pull up in front of the house and drop off like 250 newspapers all stacked up in bundles. And we would mm -hmm. sit there for a couple of hours, wrapping them up and putting them in rubber bands. And then I would map out the, the, the strategic plan. I'm say, okay, so you're going you gonna to take this block and that block, and then I'm going to take this block, and then we're going to, I would draw it out on the map and then we're going to meet up. Wow. Yes. And that was my first taste of earning money. I was like, wow. And then I became obsessed with saving. And, and then I got my first actual job in high school as a sophomore uh, working in a butcher shop. And so I would show up to work and put on a white coat and I would leave work bloody and all messy and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and when I, that was my first steady income. Uh, as a sophomore in high school, that was my first 
taste of having consistent money flowing in. And I just became hooked from, from that point. And so mm-hmm. I knew early that I wanted to, you know, become financially independent and learn about investing and, and things of that nature. And then somewhere along the way, in my latter years in college, a light bulb went off uh, in terms of the stock market and my interest in anal- analyzing businesses and how it works and how much wealth has been accumulated. You know, majority of, a lot of people don't notice, but majority of the wealth in the United States of America has been accumulated by way of the stock market. And it, it, has, it has no filters, no barriers. It doesn't care what your background is, where you come from, none of that matters. Anyone can invest in a stock market. And I was just completely drawn in and I became obsessed and I ended up launching my own financial investment firm and the rest is history, you know, so, yeah. That's great. I'm, I'm just, I just had the image of you in the butcher shop. Oh, buddy, and the math, that's, that's just so courageous. And that's what I tell many people, like, it does not start, if you see someone who is in a certain space, it's not just overnight. I, I had a friend of mine said, this last night, she's like, so talk to me <laughs> about when we last hang out at your apartment, you were in Florida, you were going through a divorce and you were working your butt off, you know, you were doing two things and you weren't, you were working pretty much like 20 hours a day. Uh, and she said you were in school as well. What did you transition to that space, to the space you're in now? I'm like, they're really no different. I'm just doing it at a higher level, bigger level. And I think I'm a different version, meaning I am smarter than I was then uh, mm-hmm. four years ago. So it's not something that work hard. Like someone said, you're just, how do you keep up with all your business ends and what are, you know, your job and how do you do that? Well, I've been grinding since I was before I was starting my own business, you know, so it, it's a product of hard work and consistency that is, I would say, number one for everything in your life. Um, and also, while I say hard work, it's smart work, too, more than anything. Absolutely. Because I feel like you can work very hard at just going around in circles Absolutely. if you're Absolutely. not strategic yep. and intentional. That, that is a very, very powerful point, Alisa. I, you know, I go back to the days where... I was working in the, in the private sector as a production supervisor for a manufacturing company. And my subordinates, they, you know, I had some, you know, you always have a mixture of slackers and those who do enough just to get by. And then you have your top performers. And mm-hmm. I had top performers who were just, it was, sometimes it would be very grueling, laborious work. But it, at their position, in, in an hourly position, getting paid hourly, it is one of those things where it doesn't matter how hard you work from a labor standpoint, physical hard work, uh, you, you're gonna get paid the same amount per hour. Yes. So I, I would challenge people to find a way to work smarter and then mm-hmm. leverage your income to to generate some type of passive income. Yes. Some type of investment yeah. in place to where no matter, it. it your source of wealth shouldn't solely come from you having to physically do work. There, there needs to be some things in place to work. Out church. <laughs> you can be chilling out, watching a football game. You sleep, you sleep, whatever. You have something in the background where your money is working for you. Exactly. So definitely. I'm over here smiling cheesy because <laughs> that is the concept I've had because the nature of my job speaking and coaching, you just hear that and you're like, going in your head if you picture me you're thinking i'm going to go from one client to the next and then i'm going to show up and speak all over the place and that could be if you you choose to so i've been able to with god's help and and again my network (laughs) is my network to strategically come up with not i wouldn't call it a business idea but with plans that can reach people and serve them but also bring income exactly while i'm still now waking up there's income coming in without me running and being a hundred, seeing a hundred clients a day to meet a goal or whatever finances I need to meet. So that is the, if anyone's listening, they should replay what you just said 